Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and today we're going to be talking about some severe weather that's going to be coming into the United States, and also a potential Omega Block to come in right after that. Now I understand Omega Block really doesn't ring many bells for much folks across the country, so we'll be explaining that in a little bit more detail in this forecast, while also going into detail on what is going to be possible with our severe weather. So coming all the way up to our 500 millibar height anomalies, pretty much all this shows is that we've got some low pressures here in the blue and in the red we have some high pressure blue generally means some storminess is possible and the orange to red usually means thunderstorm activity will be suppressed now as i push this forward you can see that overall we're really not talking about too much we're gonna have a small chance for severe weather over there uh near missouri going into tomorrow but then eventually after tomorrow you can see a low pressure system ejects out of canada and comes into the united states as i continue to push this forward you can see that it really starts to deepen uh, over there near minnesota and wisconsin and to the south there's going to be just enough instability for some severe weather as of right now it's not looking super dangerous we're not really talking about chances for tornado outbreaks this is going to be a pretty small scale storm but we could see some severe weather and maybe a small chance for tornadoes uh, with this next storm coming in but then after this storm comes through look at this we get a pretty large high pressure system work its way into the western united states now look at this as i push this forward you can see that it kind of keeps our low pressure systems over here more into the northeastern portion of the united states in order to get some decent moisture to come out of the gulf of mexico this is kind of not the pattern that you want and that's a good thing as the more moisture we get out of the gulf of mexico the more instability we have and a higher chance for some severe weather and tornadoes we have so it looks like after our next little storm it could get pretty quiet across the united states at least in terms of any dangerous severe weather. Now, we could still have some smaller storms and some smaller instances of severe weather, but as of right now, it does really seem like this high pressure system is gonna build in. If we come over here to our model trends, which kind of shows us what these model runs were looking like the day before, you can see that it's pretty consistent here in showing that a blocking high pressure system will set up here in the western portion of the United States. And if we compare this to other models here, you can see this is the uh, UK model, and this is over here is the euro model and you can see that all these models are kind of in agreement here uh, for a pretty widespread high pressure system keeping that thunderstorm activity suppressed for most of the united states now because of this ridging we are probably going to see some higher temperatures over here in the west coast which are lowest temperatures being up here near the great lakes and the northeast over the next couple of days down here in the southeast it's going to be pretty much around average a little bit above average over the next six to ten days but man look at over here in the desert southwest West, over here near Colorado, New Mexico, going into Arizona and parts of Utah, temperatures are going to be way above average. So be expecting the outside to feel a little bit warmer than usual. Our hazards out there for most of the country, at least for today, is going to be some fire danger over here near Texas, going through Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and into parts of Illinois. Also, some high winds going to be possible over here near Wyoming and Montana. Some winter weather is going to be possible up there in the mountains as well, and some more fire danger is possible over here into parts of Nebraska and New Mexico and look at over here we had a freeze warning this morning in Mississippi and Alabama but it is expected to warm up at least into the 60s in some of these areas today now in terms of severe weather going into to, to tomorrow you can see that we do have a small chance for severe weather over here near Kansas City going into parts of Missouri tornado risk is going to be really low there's going to be a small hail chance and we're really not talking about much of a chance for damaging winds with this just some hail up there in that area and then going Going into two, day three, things get a little bit more interesting, but still not looking overly threatening right now. We don't have any hatched risk regions yet for significant severe weather, so we're no, really not expecting that at this time. But again, models could change as we get closer to the range of accuracy, so we're still waiting for our models to get there. But overall, I mean, if you live over here in parts of Texas, going into Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama, and a little bit of parts there in Kentucky, I would still be keeping an eye on this and coming back for some new forecasts cast just in case you guys do have outdoor plans on this day. Now coming down to that, to that area and bringing up our NAM 3K model here as we push this uh, into about the, sorry, scratch that. We're going to be looking at the HRRR model first for the first day of severe weather tomorrow. Sorry about that. But yeah, so this is the HRRR model as we move into the 21st, going into the 22nd. As we move throughout the day, there's really not going to be much happening over here into Missouri, but eventually some storms could fire. But as you can see, it's pretty darn conditional. The HRRR really isn't picking up much 
much for the 22nd, but maybe as we move into the nighttime hours, we could see some scattered showers. So some of these might have a very small possibility of severe weather and hail. But again, you know, it's going to be a pretty low chance uh, for that severe weather to occur and also very conditional. It could be up there. Maybe it could be down to the south. But these little really small little areas of convection, you typically really don't see much accuracy in terms of the location until the day of. So it's going to be kind of hard to plan around. But whenever it does happen, it's going to be brief and most of it's going to be non-threatening. Now moving into, you know, our next day for severe weather, which is going to be on the 23rd here, you can see that we are going to have a low pressure system up here, bringing a decent amount of snow over into Minnesota, also uh, up into Wisconsin as well, and parts of Michigan could get in on that snow as well. And then further down to the south, we're going to be having this little frontal boundary that extends all the way down uh, through parts of Arkansas going into the northeast corner of Texas. Now, if we look at our surface base cape, our instability, our storm food uh, by this time, at least by the NAM here, uh, you can see that our instability kind of gets all the way up into parts of Texas going into Louisiana. We're here at around 4 p.m. And that's pretty much going to be the furthest north extent of this, at least according uh, to the NAM. So it's going to be really in this area where we're going to be expecting that severe weather to be possible. If we come over here to our model trend, you can see that we've been pretty consistent here run to run on where this instability and storm food is going to be. And if we compare this to other models, you can see that the NAM is a little bit far south compared to other models, but it is falling within the range of averages here. So there's definitely some decent agreement that this instability will be there. Our lapse rates, which pretty much determine how fast our updrafts are going to form, how easily they can get established here. But first, you need forcing before that. But, you know, our lapse rates are important to see severe weather, and there are going to be some decent lapse rates with these storms. So hail is definitely going to be a possibility here and some damaging winds. And if we come way up into the atmosphere at around when we're expecting these storms to try to fire, uh, you can see that we really don't have too much divergence. We're over here in the 300 millibar range and divergence again. It's just that void that forces storms to rise. If you don't really have, you know, stronger forcing, you know, it's kind of hard for these storms to get going, but not impossible. There is some subtle forcing here. Very, very, very subtle and weak forcing as we're going to be getting a glancing blow uh, by this trough on the southern side. But coming over to our 500 millibar winds, you can see that we do have some winds extending down in and over that area of instability down here into parts of Texas and Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee. So that's where we're going to be expecting some storms to fire along that sinking cold front. And then coming down into the 850 millibar range, you can see that we're going to have a little bit of a shortwave trough on the southern side of this trough. This is going to elevate uh, some potential there for some tornadoes. But as you can see, it's a little bit missed time. By the time our storms will most likely try to fire here, it's going to be a little bit off to the east. So if we do get any storms fire, maybe over here in Tennessee at the very beginning of the event, that's probably where we're going to see some of our most elevated tornado threat. But regardless, from Tennessee down into Arkansas, there is going to be some lower level shear. So some severe weather and tornadoes will certainly be possible. But as of right now, just due to the fact that we have a little bit weaker shear along most of our storms, especially once they get started and getting going, it's going to be a pretty conditional threat for tornadoes, especially since we have a lot less forcing. But if they can fire, mature, and then tap into this shear environment, tornadoes will be possible this day. Yeah, as this uh, cold front sinks down, you can see that storms start to fire at around, you know, 7 to 10 p.m. That's going to be really from Kentucky all the way down into Louisiana. Might completely miss Arkansas. It really just depends on when these storms fire. It'll be interesting to see what our shorter range models have to say about this timing because things will definitely still change as we get a little bit closer. But yeah, you can see that frontal boundary sinks down and then eventually moves off to the east where severe weather will be possible. Then once we go overnight uh, into the 24th, things just kind of dissipate and we're really not expecting much more out of this storm but you can definitely tell uh you know there there, there could be some storms firing and then and then further up to the north you can see that we start to see some snow up there in north dakota going into minnesota as we move into the 22nd at around 10 a.m that's going to be starting to move into areas like wisconsin as well that eventually moves into michigan still snowing over there in minnesota and wisconsin by 7 p.m on the 23rd and then eventually we could get a little bit of extra snow uh, up there into parts of the northeast as well and then by the time we move into around 1 p.m really the only state that's going to be getting any snow or precipitation in the United States at all is really going to be Maine. Maybe some rain over there near the coast, 
and maybe some light rain and some snow up there in the higher re elevations over here in the Pacific Northwest. But as you can see, generally, after the storm moves through, it's going to be pretty clear and non-hazardous over the next couple of days after the storm. And that's, again, because of that high-pressure system. You can see it here, H1031. That's that high-pressure system and denoting how strong it is. And 1031 is definitely a pretty decent strength high-pressure system. As we come over here to our total snowfall, you can see up here in the northern United States, we are expecting expecting some snow up here into Minnesota, Wisconsin, going up into the Northeast, and also Northern Michigan and the UP of Michigan, and also some more mountainous snow over here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, if we look at our other models opinion on this snow, you can see that there are a wide range of different scenarios here. So we're still not really in that range of accuracy yet for our next snowstorm. But overall, you can see that if we come over here to the NWS blend of models, which kind of blends in everything, there's definitely a decent chance of snow, at least up here in the Northern Plains, going into the Northern Great Lakes, and then also coming into the South, almost said Southeast, Northeast. Last but not least, our temperature changes across the United States are gonna be trending towards warmer, especially over here into the South, west but also over into the central plains and into the southeast you know average temperatures going into spring especially down there for the southeast and the ohio valley is just generally warmer warmer than what we've been dealing with after this last storm system came through and brought down some cold air we've been all been feeling that but it's going to warm up pretty quickly here uh, especially as we move into around 1 p.m you can see we could have 50 degree temperatures all the way up there into north dakota also down here in the pacific southwest you can see that we have 70 degree temperatures trying to creep back up in there 60 degree temperatures going into Texas all the way into the southeast and maybe making it all the way up into Virginia and then as we continue to push this forward you can see that those temperatures continue to try to hold down mainly down here in the southeast but we could still see some of those temperatures try to creep up here into the central plains and into the midwest as well and then as I continue to push this forward eventually we could get some cooler air during the nighttime hours as we move into the 24th but for the most part as the day warms back up it's going to heat back up and we can see widespread 50s to 40s up here in the northern tier of the United States and looking at the south we're talking 60s and 70s pretty much all the way across the board and it's going to be pretty much right after this when that omega block comes in and really starts to warm up the western portion of the United States so we'll have more information on that as it gets into our range of accuracy but thankfully we're not talking about anything super dangerous which is a nice little change of pace all of us can get a little bit of relaxation in I hope that brightens your mood and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you guys on the next video peace